Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nairi, also known as Wedding Fashion Expert. As you can see, today we are in Lavella Bridal, located in Los Angeles, California. Today, I am going to be showing you the differences in shapes and silhouettes for wedding dresses. Before we dive in, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see and hear about. I am here for you. I'm gonna go get changed into some dresses and walk you through the different shapes and silhouettes and tell you exactly why I do not recommend getting hung up on the names and titles that designers or stores or stylists name the different shapes of gowns. This is really important. I want you to be able to focus on whether you want a fitted dress or you want a ball gown. So my number one question to my brides is, are we doing, are we showing off your body or do you want to wear a ball gown? or do you wanna do both? So I'm gonna break everything down and show you why this is so important. I'm gonna go get changed and I'll be right back. Here we are in the first dress. So first we're gonna break down fitted dresses. There are four different categories in which people name a fitted dress. So the first one is going to be fit to flare, mermaid, a trumpet cut, or a sheath. This is why I tell you to throw all the names out the window because what one person calls this dress a trumpet, another person could call it a fit to flare, another person could also consider this a mermaid. Now sheath is the one style which I am going to put on for you. A sheath or that could also be considered a column would just go straight down. So actually a sheath and a column have two different names to it. As you can see, this can get very confusing and people name them different things. Like you could call this literally, like I mentioned, a fit to flare, a mermaid, a trumpet. Any of those three would technically apply depending on who you're talking to. So what you want to determine is do you want a fitted shape? And notice that this cuts a little bit higher. So this isn't my mid thigh, but you could also have a dress that which technically a lot of people would consider a mermaid that goes even more down to the bottom of your knee and flares out from there. And that's what I'm gonna show you next is something that goes a little bit longer. So if you're shorter in height, this is actually really great for you because the skirt cuts a little bit higher and it also gives you the best of both worlds because it's giving you a lot of volume and you're showing off your body at the same time. I encourage you to ignore all the names and try the different proportions. Designers get really creative, they create hybrids, so they're kind of all over the place in terms of proportion and where the flare starts. Next I'm going to put on for you right now is something really nice and snug all the way to the knee and flares out from there, but like I mentioned, throw the names out the window. Just decide if you want something form-fitted or if you want a ball gown. Here's another style that could be considered a mermaid, a fit to flare, trumpet, you name it. But again, as you can see, it's a completely different proportion. So you'll want to be able to try on these different proportions of where the skirt begins and also how much volume you want on the bottom. The next dress I'm going to show you starts a little bit higher and doesn't have as much volume as the last dress I just had on and this one. So I'll be right back. Here we have yet another fitted gown that individuals would classify as a mermaid, a trumpet, or even a fit to flare. You can see that this one has less volume in the bottom compared to the other two dresses that we had on. Also, what's really interesting about this one compared to the other two is that it is not cut straight across like the other two. It comes up a little bit, which is really flattering on different heights. So if you're shorter, this will elongate you. If it's taller, it'll still elongate you. And this also helps to contour the body and really show off the hourglass shape. When you have more fullness at the bottom on this one or the other two that we tried on, it's just a rule of thumb. The bigger the bottom, the smaller the waist looks. So in the column slash sheath that we're going to be putting on, you'll notice that my body starts to look a little bit more straight and it's not as contoured showing my waist. Obviously my body hasn't changed from dress to dress. It's the gown that's bringing out the proportions and the shape of my body. And that's what you're really looking for as you're trying on dresses. Not only what do you like vi visually and what looks good appealing to you, but also what is the most flattering on your body. As you can see here, there are so many titles that determine, categorize these dresses. 
I highly, highly recommend that you throw all of these names out the window, show your stylist photos of what it is that you're liking, and just determine if you wanna show off your body or if you wanna be a princess in a ball gown or perhaps something a little bit more understated, but you really wanna have that ball gown kind of boho chic vibe to it. So that's really what you're determining, showing off your body or not showing off your body. And I'm also gonna show you in the next dress as well how you could potentially do both. You could show off your body with fullness of the skirt. That's the most important thing. Throw all of that, the terminology away and let your stylist work her magic or his magic based on your feedback and wanting to show off your body or doing a ball gown. Here we have a dress that would be considered a sheath or a column. Some may call this a fit to flare because it does flare out a teeny bit at the bottom. It has a fabric called horsehair that's manipulating it to stay out. So again, as you can see, you can kind of name it anything. This particular dress comes with an overskirt. So you can wear this with the full skirt all the way around, or you could do it as a half skirt where the front of the dress shows. So I'm going to show you both options next. But this is a really great option for individuals, for brides who want to wear, have the best of both worlds. So if you want the best of both worlds, opting for something fitted like this underneath and doing a skirt on top is a great one. So let me show you that next. Here is the matching skirt that goes with this dress and you can mix and match, so keep that in mind. Let's first say that you didn't like this particular skirt, you could do a tulle skirt or a different fabric, organza, satin, whatever you wanted. This is just particularly designed with this dress. So this is a full skirt that goes all the way around and it literally would just connect right here like this. So this is what it would look like for a ball gown or the way that I'm holding it is a half like this. You could put on like this as a half skirt. So there is so much room for play here and this just gets attached at the waist. The seamstress would do it or we would order it from the designer like this. But yeah, this is, these are the different options. So you can have the best of both worlds. You can show off your body with the big dramatic back or you can have it go all the way around and have a complete element of surprise and nobody would know that you have a fitted dress underneath the skirt. It's the best of both worlds and now we will move on to ball gowns. This is what many people would consider an A-line or they could even consider this a princess cut. Again, so many names, you're gonna have ball gown, A-line, princess cut within those categories. The same rule applies to this type of shaped gowns in terms of the bigger the bottom, the smaller the waist. So we are going to try on, this is the most A-line that we have right now to show you and then we're gonna go a little bit bigger and then over the top bag so that you can see the different ways in which this flatters my body. And it's fun for you to explore to see which versions of these types of ball gowns you prefer on your body. Here is another ball gown with a little bit more fullness in this one. Now, the beauty of gowns that have layers of crinoline or perhaps a hoop skirt underneath that's giving you this volume, you can peel some of those layers away. So for example, in the last dress I had on, you can't really make that fuller because of the width in which the skirt is cut. This one, you could potentially make it a little bit fuller if you wanted more volume under here, you could add layers or you could take away layers. So I typically recommend if you're not quite sure how full you want the dress to be, be sure and ask your stylist, ask the alteration department, could we add volume or take volume away? Because that would make the world of a difference in a dress and ultimately that could be the decision maker whether you go with that dress or not based on that. Also, just another thing to consider here, you can absolutely add a strap, an off the shoulder. That's something that could be added to this as well. And this is also why you need a stylist guiding you, letting you know what is possible and what isn't possible in alterations. Next, we have our very last dress. I'm going big or I'm going home and we're gonna do a ball gown. Feeling all the princess feels in this gorgeous ball gown. Again, to reiterate, you could add more volume to this or you could even take away some volume from it. Another thing I'd like to point out when it comes to ball gowns, many people, and it's very common to think this, think that your waist is down by your hip bone, which is right about here. In bridal, we consider your waist. So when you get measured for your wedding dress, we will take your bust, waist, and hip measurements. We consider your waist where you bend to the side and where that crease lies, 
that is your natural waist. So traditionally ball gowns are usually at the waist or it would be a drop waist ball gown, which would be exactly that, a drop from your waist. So those are the different proportions that are the most common for you to know. And I just hope that this added clarity for you to identify the differences between these names, how confusing it could be, and how certain individuals use different names to classify different categories. So the most important thing for you to take away from this video is don't focus on the names, throw the names out the window, try things on, see what connects and clicks with you. I hope that this helps you find your dream dress. For more videos, please be sure to tune in and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video.